Hello, so today I am going to talk you through identifying effective language devices in A Handmaid's Tale. So, question will always be pretty much the same. So how does a writer use language to describe? And then this is the little bit that will change. So today the narrator's actions and feelings is what we will be looking at. And I'm going to focus my paragraph on words and phrases and language features and techniques. So let's have a quick look. So first off, you'll be given some context about the insert, the text that you were given in the exam. Make sure that you read this. It's really important that you know what you are writing about and you can use some of this information. So this extract is taken from the beginning of The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, published in 1985. You will always be told where in the text this comes from. You will be told the text itself, the author and the date it was published. And then a little bit about um, the background of the story. So this dystopian novel follows the journey of Offred, a woman who has been forced to bear children for a population of infertile people. So she is one of many of the handmaids. So this is the extract you have been given. So. I open the front gate and close it behind me, looking down but not back. The sidewalk is red brick. That is the landscape I focus on, a field of oblongs gently undulating where the earth beneath has buckled from decade after decade of winter frost. The colour of the bricks is old yet fresh and clear. Sidewalks are kept much cleaner than they used to be. I walk to the corner and wait. I used to be bad at waiting. They also serve who only stand and wait, said Aunt Lydia. She made us memorise it. She also said, not all of you will make it through. Some of you will fall on dry ground or thorns. Some of you are shallow rooted. She had a mole on her chin that went up and down while she talked. She said, think of yourselves as seeds. And right then her voice was wheedling, conspiratorial, like the voices of those women who used to teach ballet classes to children and would say, Arms up in the air now, let's pretend we're trees. So I've chosen to focus my paragraph on the metaphor. So the metaphor by Aunt Lydia, so some of you will fall on dry ground or thorns. However, this isn't actually telling us how Offred is feeling. So we need to make sure that we cover that. So let's have a look at answering the question. So Atwood, I'm using the context, I'm using the author's name, informs the reader of Offred's feelings towards Aunt Lydia through Offred's choice of language. So there I'm using the terminology from the question, describing her words as conspiratorial. So I'm using a single word, so I'm ticking off that bullet point in response to Aunt Lydia's metaphor terminology, picking off the um, language devices and features bullet point embedded quotations some of you will fall on dry ground or thorns analysis this shows that Lydia does not value the work and individuality of the girls that are under her care this makes the reader feel that Aunt Lydia doesn't care about the harm that may be caused to the women and that then again embedding the quotation which demonstrates this fall on dry ground or thorns so I'm giving a reader's personal response as well in response to her speech, so I'm now tying this into Offred's uh, feelings, which is answering the question. Offred may feel alone and unwanted due to the conspiratorial message embedding that quotation there. The adjective, more terminology, I'm actually naming the word class, conspiratorial, suggests that Aunt Lydia might be forcing Offred and the other women to do something which our society may deem illegal. So I'm taking that even further and trying to deduce what on earth is going on in Offred's mind and why she's using this terminology. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you on my next video.